Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing today? I thought I'd come up with my mask on today. Y'all like it? Y'all can get one. Just see me after church. I got to take it off now, though. All right. Amen. Amen. Listen, I'm just so excited about this day. I'm excited about what God is doing. And I was excited to, 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 to be a participant in baptism today because that was my niece. And uh, <clears throat> we've been praying and believing God that he's going to move on the young people. You know, the, the, those, you know all those that have kind of slipped away a little bit, but God's bringing them back, those prodigals. And all we need is one. All we need is one to begin to ignite, and we begin to see that overflow. And so I'm just, y'all continue praying. We believe in God that he's going to do great things, not just in my family, but in your family as well, that God's going to bring back those prodigals. He's going to bring back those young people <clears throat> to him. Amen? <clears throat> Amen. But listen, I I'm just so excited to be before you today, and, and this is the day the Lord has made, and I've I just been just excited. I, 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 I told my wife, matter of fact, I've been singing that song. I had a song I've been singing for the past, no, I ain't going to sing it, for the past couple of days. But I woke up singing this song. It was in my heart. I wasn't singing it. It was just ringing. And I was like, man, God, you just something. Something. No, I ain't going to sing that. I ain't going to sing that. I'm going to preach this message. I might sing it at the end. But it's been just ringing. I woke, you know, when you wake up and when you open your eyes, and there's something already in your spirit from God. I mean, that's how you want to wake up in the morning. You don't want to wake up worrying about the day. You don't want to work, wake up telling me, oh, I don't feel good. I don't. No, I woke up with a song, a melody ringing in my heart. Oh, my God. But listen, with today is Palm Sunday. Y'all got your palm? Yeah. Amen. Those of you that are not here today, we wish you had one. But listen, this is a great day, and of course, Today is Palm Sunday, and it's also the day we're going to be closing out our United series today. But we're closing out the series, but that's going to continue to be our focus throughout the year. United, one God, one body, and one church. So even though we're going to go into some other messages that God gives us, we're going to continue to have that as our focus because we're believing in this year God's going to do some uniting. He's going to do some uniting in the body of Christ. He's going to do some uniting in the world. And, of course, we're going to be the catalyst that go out to bring the unity to the world. Amen? So continue to keep that dear to your heart. <clears throat> but listen, we, we, we're thinking about today, you know, Palm Sunday. This is the day that we, we celebrate and remember uh, Jesus' triumphal, you know, entry into Jerusalem. And so we, we, we think about uh, uh, it's the week before his death and resurrection. You can imagine Jesus as he's coming in there, he, he's thinking about, what he's coming to do, because he wasn't blinded to that. He, it wasn't something that was afar off. He knew that it was coming soon. Plus, he knew when he went there, when he came to earth, he, came, he knew why he came. And so, but there's a connection between this, this Palm Sunday, this triumphal entry of Jesus, the sacrifice that he made for us, and us being united together. Because if Jesus had not come, if he had not given his life, there would be no unity in the earth. See, we wouldn't be, be able to be united as one. See, because we don't get united as one just because we join a church. We get united as one as we come into Christ and we get a relationship with him. That's how we become one. Even though we be, still be our different individuals, we become one in him. So everybody who names the name of Jesus, we're all one body. We're all together. We're all one unit. We are the body of Christ and he is the head of this body. Matter of fact, this, this triumphal entry, it validated him as the Messiah, the long-awaited king that was coming. They knew he, he was coming, but this validated him. Even though he had been on earth, he was doing works, he was doing all these things, but when he made that entry, it validated him as the one who was coming to save the earth. Uh, uh, <clears throat> It was the fulfillment of the, tested, uh, prophet, the prophecy by uh, uh, Zechariah. And so if you turn to chapter 9 in Zechariah, you'll see where that, that's found. <clears throat> Zechariah 9 and 9. 
It's the fulfillment of that Old Testament prophecy. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter <clears throat> of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a coat, the foal of a donkey. You know, the prophet Zechariah, he, he told the people, he told them to rejoice greatly. Because what? Because the long-awaited king and Messiah was coming to them. And, and although Zechariah's words were, were far off, see, he, he was speaking prophetically. He, they were probably looking, thinking that it was going to happen right then. But even though it didn't, they continued to have some excitement. They continued to be encouraged about his anticipated arrival. And see, that's how we should be as the body of Christ. See, every day we should get up every day and we should be excited. Today might be the day that Jesus returns. <clears throat> Today might be the day that he comes back. Today might be the day that he comes to get those that are already resting and, and take them up and, and those that remain are going to get caught up with him. But see, we got to wake up that way. You know, and most of the time we don't wake up like that. We don't wake up anticipating. We don't wake up excited about today because we're telling Jesus, don't come yet. I got something else I want to do. I got something else I want to accomplish. But every day we should get up. And they had this excitement. But we see the fulfillment of this prophecy when Jesus entered Jerusalem. And he was on a donkey just as, as it was prophesied. And, and he came in to the shouts and praises of people. They were laying down their cloaks and they were waving palm branches. And, and they, was, they were just shouting and crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the blessed one who comes in the name of the Lord. When you get up in the morning, you should be crying out, Hosanna. He's coming. Hallelujah. I bet you feel better when you get up in the morning and you start crying out Hosanna and you start calling out to God in the morning when you first awaken. I bet your day goes a whole lot better than getting up turning on the news. Because you can turn the news on and get depressed. But you can get up in the morning and just get in a praise and feel good all day long. Hallelujah. Look, look. <laughs> Look, this, 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 this fulfillment of this prophecy, this, this is one of the greatest, greatest stories in the Bible. This is one that, you know, there are a lot of stories that, that, that parallel throughout the Gospels, but, but there are not a whole lot that you can find in all four. But you can find a, 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 an account of, of him coming in, this triumphal entry into Jerusalem in every one of those books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you find an account that lets you know how important this was. But I love Matthew's account because Matthew even made a direct, you know, he, 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 he made a direct reference to that prophecy. So look right quick with me to, in Matthew 21st chapter, uh, verses 4 through 5. And it says, this, look, this is how he even started out. He was letting you know that, that this, was, this was something that had already been talked about, has spoken, and now it was actually happening. And, and while I'm right there, I, I, just, I, just, I just sense God saying, and some of you are waiting for some things to happen. Don't stop believing God. Don't stop trusting him because just like that happened, just like that prophecy was fulfilled, God's going to fulfill the prophecies over your lives. He's going to fulfill the prophecies over us as a body of believers. It says, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. That's the exact things that, that Zechariah prophesied. And those were the exact things that happened. And, and some of the key things about this is that he didn't come high and mighty. He didn't come riding on a stallion. He didn't come with a whole bunch of soldiers all around him with spears and, and, and with, with big old shields and, and all this glamorous armor on. He came riding humbly on a donkey. Humbly on a donkey. That's why it should be easy for us to be humble, to, to, to not be walking around in a whole bunch of pride because our Savior came humbly. He came humbly. He didn't come trying to say, here I am, it's me. He, make some room for me. I, I, I. No, he came humbly and still did the work. I, look, I, I just encourage you. Walk humbly before the Lord. See, 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 Matthew's account lets us know that the people were moved by what they saw. When they saw him riding in there, they started asking, who in the world is this? Who is this? 
But in Matthew, it says this. It says, and when he had come into Jerusalem, verses 10 through 11, he said, all the city was moved. And they were saying, who is this? So the multitude said, see, somebody knew who he was. They said, this is Jesus, the prophet, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. See, somebody knew. See, see some of them didn't recognize who he was. See, they thought he was going to be this savior that was coming, this warrior that was going to come and, and, and deliver them from the Roman Empire. See, they didn't know. But those who followed him, they knew who he was. See, those who have been walking close to him. See, if you're walking close to Jesus, you know who he is. You're not wondering who he is. You're not trying to figure out who he is. If you have a relationship with him, you know who he is. They knew that he was the one. They knew that he was the promised Messiah, that he was going to be the king. He was going to be the savior of the world. He wasn't just coming to save them from Rome. He was coming to save the entire world from their sins. He was coming to redeem us, to unite us and to make us one again with the Father. See, because when sin came in, we got separated from the Father. Jesus came to restore that, to make us, put us back in that place. See, 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 the Father, when he made us, he created us as special beings. See, we were something special to God. See, see, God loved us so much that he created us like him. He made us in his image. There's no other creation that he made like him. And so he, he, he said, I'm going to make them just like me. And I'm just going to make them just a little bit lower. He didn't say, I'm going to put them way down here on the bottom of the earth. He said, I'm going to make them just a little bit lower. All you got to do is just believe me, trust me, and obey me. Easy. It's easy. And it? Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I, I knew that. I knew the answer was going to go. But you can do it. But he still loved us enough, even though we fail, to send Jesus to come and to restore the relationship back to him. See, 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 we, 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 in this whole United series, that's the thing we've been focusing on, the power of one. Because that's what the Father desired. He desired for us to be one together with him. One. Not separated. See, sin calls the separation, but God desired to have relationship with us because he's a relational God. He's not some God. He's not a father that just sits over there in a corner somewhere and has no relationship. He, but no, he wants to be with us. He wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to have relationship. He wants to be involved in our lives. He wants us to call on him. He wants us to trust in him. He wants us to believe in him. He wants us to put all of our care in him. He wants with us all of our confidence to be in him. That's how close of a relationship he desires to have with us. Is that how you're walking? See, remember, we, 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 this, this power of one focus on the one God. See, that's what this whole thing is all about. There was one God. That's the whole foundation of the Christian faith. There's only one God. Yeah, there, there's a triune being, but there's one. One God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There's nothing else. There's no separation. None of them come against each other. None of them are, are, are in competition for, for, for position. They're focused, they, they function together as one. That's how we're supposed to be. Because see, we all together as one. He looks at us, he sees you just like he sees me. It doesn't matter what my role is or where my name is or where I came from, where I grew up, what my background was. But once you come into relationship with him, we all are his priests. We all are his children. We all are the ones that he showers the same things upon. Then, then there's one body. See, he, you, all of us are united together. Look, he's not coming back over here to, to get no Baptists or going over there to get no Methodists or going over here to get the cat. No, he's coming back to get his body, one body. See, it's only one body. You only got one body. You don't have no body you put on on Mondays and another body you put on on Tuesdays because you take your head off and put on another body. No, Jesus is the head. He got one body, and we all are part of that one body. It doesn't matter. If you've accepted him as Lord and Savior, you're part of that body. Find your place. Look, look, and then there's only one church. See, see, we're living, we have to live worthy of that calling. See, we only have one calling. He called us. Look, if somebody's calling you other than Jesus, don't answer them. That's the ones that you need to let go to the voicemail. That's the ones you need to let, let uh, you know, I'm going to look at that caller ID, but I'm not going to mess with you. But I'm going to see when Jesus calls me, I'm going to answer every time, and I'm going to go and do the things that he has called me 
to do. See, we got to walk worthy of our calling in Christ. How do we do that? By walking in humility and gentleness. Look, what else? In patience and in love. See, if you ain't loving, you ain't, you, 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 you're not part of the church. You can't be a part of this body if you don't love. You can't be a part of this body if you don't have no, you know how we talking about, I ain't got no patience. You better get some. Because that's part of your calling. That's part of walking worthy of the calling. You got to have some patience. You have to have some humility. Hallelujah. You got to be gentle. Yes, Lord. Listen, I tell you, I, I used to be one of them firecrackers. I used to be, you know, I, I act, then I think. Yeah, but when Jesus came into my, <laughs> oh, when Jesus came into my, <laughs> Woo! all that changed, all that changed. I don't know where I get all this patience from. I be trying to slow other people down sometimes, pump the brakes. But with this, listen, with unity comes, there's a time where we have, there's some spiritual, uh, there's a spiritual maturation process. To unity, it doesn't just happen overnight. It, there's a process. There's a process. See, it's something we have to go through, but because ultimately we're trying to become the new men, the new man, the new person, the new life. That's what we're trying to represent as we walk out this walk. We're trying to be, you know, being united. We're trying to end up being, and if you look at this text, you'll find out we, if you go back to, 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 to Ephesians, the thing that is leading to is us becoming new creations, new men or new women, new beings, a new nature. That's what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be brand new. And if you go back to Ephesians 4, Paul, you can see if this was important. Because he was urging. You ever notice Paul, when Paul trying to get a point over, he, he doesn't mix words. He, he, he lets them know, look, this is important. You need to pay attention. So, 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 so I'm going to be like Paul. Y'all that's joining me right now online, you need to pay attention. Anybody in your way, anybody around the house making noise, go get somewhere where you can listen. Those of you that are in this sanctuary, put your phone under your seat so that you won't even see it. Because see, the moment that I'm saying something that's going to be profound, that's going to be impactful to your life, is going to be the moment that the devil's going to send that text message. He's going to send, look, he's going to send an ESPN notification that your team just got somebody. He's going to do something that's going to draw you away from what God is saying. I'm telling you, he'll do it. <clears throat> Ask me how I know. My, phone, my watch just ring, just buzzing and ringing. I'm like, leave me alone. <clears throat> but an urgency. Look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 17 through 19. This is what he says. He says, so I'll tell you this and insist on it in the Lord. See, he's letting them know that there's an urgency here. Don't take this lightly. Uh -uh. He tells us this, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the unbelievers, the unsaved. Now, you, you're in the church now. You're a believer. You've accepted him as Lord and Savior. What he's saying is you shouldn't be living like those who have not accepted him. And look, he says, uh, 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 in the, uh, uh, like the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. See, their minds are warped. My mind was warped. I, I, you know, I share some of the things along the way. I, 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 you know, some things I can't share, but some things I have shared. I, I, every time I share something, it, it shocks Reverend Kevin. He'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> he said, don't tell me nothing else. But this is what God does. He cleans us up. He makes us brand new. Look, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. See, their hearts are dark. Their hearts are dark, so they don't see the light of Christ. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. Corrupt. Corrupt. See, see, see. But being made one in Christ requires that we go through the process of spiritual uh, 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 maturity. Because there's a distinct difference between us, the believer, and, and those that don't know him. In other words, we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't stay the same. See, if you accepted him 
And the day you accepted him, and down the road, you're still the same as you were the day you accepted him. Something's wrong because you should be growing. You should be maturing. Something should be happening in you. You should be getting uh, more understanding. You should be getting more boldness. You should be getting more faith. You should be looking more and more like your Savior. See, 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 you, you, you shouldn't keep just looking like the same old person. See, if I was looking like I was looking the day I came down the altar, y'all be like, oh my gosh, that's, he can't pass to us. Now y'all trying to figure that one out. My God, how bad was he looking? Bad. Because <laughs> I was doing bad. I was just like this. I, my heart was dark. I was ignorant. I had no light. I had no joy. I had no peace. Everything that the enemy was doing, what was he doing? He was killing, stealing, and destroying my life. And he's doing the same to you. If you don't know him today, that's what, exactly what he's doing in your life. He's killing, stealing, and destroying. He got no good for you. Don't believe the lie, because he's the father of lies. He'll lie to you. <laughs> and if you notice, one of the first things I tell you to do, you know, when people get saved, after they get started that process with God, the salvation process, they're getting connected with God. The next thing we say, we want to connect with you. Why do we say that? Because we want people to know that you don't have to walk by yourself. We need to come alongside of you so that we can walk with you so that you can grow. So that you can grow. Because we don't want to leave you out there by yourself. See, I want you to connect. You need to connect with God. You need to connect with the body. You need to connect with the church and become a part. Get ingrained. Begin serving. Begin using your gifts and talents. Begin allowing God to, to mature you in Him. <clears throat> because we don't need to be stunted Christians. We don't need to be Christians that, that never grew up. We don't need to be only mature in our age, but we, we, you know, I've been saved 25 years, but you're still acting like the babe. No, we need to be maturing day by day in him and in our walk. And guess what? You don't have to tell nobody that you're maturing in Jesus. You don't have to tell nobody. Because as people see you, they don't know. They don't know. They're going to know by the testimony that you live. Paul tells us exactly this in Ephesians 4 and 15. That's not going to be on the screen. He, he says that, that we will grow to become in every respect the mature body in him. He's expecting that. He's expecting for us to grow up in him to become mature in him who is the head. That is Christ. So Christ don't want no warped body. He doesn't want no immature body. He wants a body that's growing, that's maturing, that's going to be effective to do the things that he has for them to do. So, so we can't stay the same. We got to grow up. Look at somebody and say, grow up. Look at somebody else and say, grow up. And they look like they, they got mad. Just tell them, grow up again. We need to grow up in him because we got a work to do. We got a work to do. And so, so, so our, 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 our effectiveness, our growth and effectiveness and, 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 and working together in unity, it, we got we to gotta grow up. See, we can't work in unity together if we don't grow up. You ever notice how kids are when, they, when they, they're young? They're real selfish. Everything is mine. Everything is mine. Everything is mine. Even what's not theirs is mine. Everything we get in our house, my, my, my granddaughter said that's hers. We get a new blanket. Oh, this is my new blanket. Everything. But as we mature, we begin to understand that everything is not going to be our way. Everything is not going to be the way we desire. We're not going to even achieve or gain everything that we desire. But at the same time, it's okay. But we're going to still work together. Even if it was somebody who seems to be getting a little further than you, or they seem to be a little bit more advanced. But it doesn't matter because we all won together. And so just like Paul was urging those in, in, in Ephesus he, with an urgency, I'm urging us, the body of Christ, look, we got to do the same thing. Because it's an important time that we're living in, and God has a work for us to do, and we can't do it if we're not maturing and working together as one. <laughs> Y'all right? All right? I'm not trying to beat nobody down. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not trying, to, trying to, you know, no, but I want you to understand this is an urgency in the earth. Sometimes it get real quiet. I'll be like, oh, Lord Jesus, I done stepped on somebody's toes. 
Then I said, okay, God, let me step on the other one. Because <laughs> if it's going to get you moving, if it's going to get you uh, 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 to do something, I, I'll be the bad guy. But we got we to, gotta, see, y'all remember, I remember now, now the church you know, I came up in, we, people used to always testify when they, when they got saved. See, we're talking about being, a, you know, being something brand new. And they used to always say, you know, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. They just say all that stuff. <laughs> and that was good. That was a testimony. But you know what? There's some truth to that. See, because as we mature, as we begin to grow, we, 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 we move away from what we were. We move away from the things that we used to do. Those things don't attract us, don't draw us anymore. See, when Jesus comes in, he changes all of that. See, he recreates us. We become a new being. Our heart is different now. See, the blackness is gone. The light is shining now. So the things that we desire are things that are going to be pleasing to God. See, there has to be a complete breakup. A complete breakup. Anybody ever had a breakup in their life? See, a breakup. I I'm talking about a complete breakup with your past sins. Not, not trying to hold a few of them. I'm, I'm going to reach back. I'm going to leave these in, 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 in arm reach. So I can, if I need. No, a complete breakup. That's, 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 that's a, a, a 180. Don't do a 360 because you're going to find yourself in the same spot. A 180 breakup. Look, look, at, look, look, look at what it says in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 20 through 24. It says, that, however, is not the way you learn. See, what is he saying? He's talking to them. He's saying, you didn't learn, you didn't come to know Jesus to go back to the world ways. You didn't come to know him to begin to do the things that you used to do all over again. He said, when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth, that is in Jesus. You were taught that with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, uh, uh, and to be made uh, uh, in, uh, in an attitude, uh, to be new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. See, that's, 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 a whole, that's your new identity. That's your new DNA when you accept him. Your DNA changes. See, you become like him now. You, you, you're now your DNA is, is righteousness and holiness. See, that's your new DNA. It, it's, it's no longer darkness and, and ugliness and all those things. See, you got to understand something. When we accept Christ into our lives, we, we shouldn't live the way we used to live. Why? Because we're no longer the people we used to be. I'm going to say that again. See, when you accept Jesus into your life, you shouldn't live the way you used to live. Why? Because you're no longer that person. You're no longer your old self. The Bible says that all things become new. <sighs> See, that's what the truth of Jesus is. That's what the truth of Jesus teaches. It teaches us this, that, that if you're going to be the new man, and for the sake of ladies, we'll say the new woman. If you're going to be that, there's some things you have, things you, that should happen, things that you, people should see in your life. What? You got to put off something. You got to renew something. And then you got to put on something. <laughs> it's all good. Because what you're putting off is your old self. And you're going to be renewing your mind. And that's a, I'm going to talk about, I, I, that's a, that's, we talked about that many times before. But, but, but you need to understand that's something that continues. So you don't renew your mind one time and say, my, my mind got renewed 25 years ago. No, you need to be renewed every day. And then you got to put on the new self. So, so I'm going to briefly talk about those. I got a little bit of time. I'm going to talk about those three things real quick. I'm going to be quick. But listen, first, Apostle Paul, he says this. He said you got to put off the old self. See, see, you got to think, when you think about putting off your old self, I, I, I thought about just, just getting rid of some old, outdated, and raggedy clothes. You know, stuff, uh, uh, I'm talking about stuff that you wouldn't get caught, you wouldn't dare get caught wearing. Y'all got some of that stuff around your house? Y'all got, y'all still got it around there? The stuff you wouldn't get caught, I mean, I'm talking about the stuff you won't give, you won't even bring it, 
Don't bring it to the clothing closet. And the stuff you won't even take to the goodwill. This is stuff that you just want to get rid of. You don't even want nobody to know you. I, I don't want nobody to even know I, I used to, I, I got this. I, I know y'all got some of them clothes. But you need to get rid of them. Why you holding on to them? See, we're trying to hold on to them because, because we're hoping that, that maybe one day I'm going to be able to, the fast is going to come back around. See, that's the way we do with our life. See, we say, God, cleanse me up, make me brand new. And then we sit back and we, we sandbag on something, just a little something that we're going to hold on to, that we can reach back to and bring back into our life just a little bit. No, I'm just going to a little bit. No, no. He said, look, cut it off. Discard it. Get rid of it. See, you got to remember, before you came to Christ, you were dead. The Scripture says you were dead. Now, if you were dead and you came back to life, why do you want to go back to the dead way of life? Yeah. Look at what it says in Ephesians, second chapter. It says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sin. Dead. Look at somebody say dead. dead. In which you used to live. Woo, that's what you used to be. Uh, when you followed the ways of the world. See, that's the thing. We can't be in the church wanting to be like the world because the world's dead. See, the life is in Christ. We are the life. We're supposed to go out and spread life to people. So it goes on to say, uh, when you were in the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. You know what? Your flesh, you know, this old, 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 old flesh, it ain't no good in it. Ain't no good in it. That's why Jesus got to come in and change that whole thing. That's why he does that. See, our lives were full of lust and corruption and deception and everything that was bad. But, but, but he's saying that's your former conduct. That's your former. That's who you used to be. That, that's the way you used to act. Why? Because in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's what? He's a new creation. Hey, look, 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 all that old mess has passed away, and behold, everything now has become new. We got some new creations in the house. We got some new creations online today. Just like the baptism, just like my niece who got baptized today. See, 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 this morning when she, when she went down in that water, see, she, she was making a declaration. She was saying, oh, I used to be dead in my transgressions and in my sins. But, but when, I went, when I went down in that water, see, see, what I was doing was, look, everything that used to be bad about me is gone. My evil speaking just got crucified in that water. Look, every bad deed that I did just got crucified in that water. Listen, jealousy and malice, all evil speaking, all evil acts, everything just got crucified in that water. And when I came up out of the water, look, it symbolized, look, it, look, look what it symbolized. It symbolized you coming up out of the grave of sin. See, because that was buried. See, that sins was buried. And so she doesn't have to get up with that stuff on her body no more. She has to get up with that stuff in her heart no more because now she's the new creation. She's been resurrected to new life in Jesus Christ. How many of you have been resurrected in this house today? How many of you have been resurrected this online today? See, when you get resurrected, you're no longer dead. So you don't get resurrected to death. You get resurrected to life. So you got to understand something. See, sometimes we look at little things like that. If she was one person that got baptized today, but you know what? The same power that, that took Jesus from that grave, that took him from the cross to the grave and back up to the Father, that same power is the same power that's at work, that was at work in her young life, that's been at work in your life, that's been at work in my life, the same power. And if you've accepted him, you're no longer the same. See, you ain't dead, you alive. And not only are you alive, but you brand new. Don't let nobody tell you that, oh, you the same old person. Oh, no, if you accepted Jesus in your life, I don't care how much you still look like yourself, you're not yourself. Second truth, that you got to be renewed in your mind. See, you got to understand, the initial work of Christ in our life is not the outward appearance. 
See, we're trying to look to find something to see what it looks like. No, it's happening on the inner man. See, that's why you got to let him in. That's why I was singing this now, since Jesus came into my heart. I didn't say since he came on my shoulders. I'm not talking about since he dropped down on me. And I'm glad that the anointing falls, but I'm glad he came into my heart. Because when he came into my heart, that's where the change started. <sighs> See, the truth of Jesus teaches us that we got to be renewed in our mind. Woo. But you got to understand something. It's an inward change. But guess what it's going to do? It's going to manifest itself as an outward. It's going to be outward. It's going to be an outward reflection. People are going to be able to see your life is different. You ain't got to even tell nobody. They'll see it. Now, if ain't nobody, you've been saved 10 years, don't nobody know you saved, you better check yourself. Because somebody should know. Somebody should know that your life is brand new. By the way you live your life, by the way you talk now, by the way you walk, by the way you act. You can't still be the same firecracker, the same short-tempered person now that you say because Jesus said, I'm making you brand new. And you're supposed to be walking in humility and in love and in peace. Oh, it's, it's a process. I ain't say it happened overnight. It's a process. But it's a continual process. You can't stop it. See, the moment you find that you gain a little ground, don't sit down and say, I made it now. No. Say, I just got a little further down the course, and I got to keep pressing my way because I know God ain't finished with me yet. He still got some stuff that I got to get straight in my life. There's some things I still got to grow up in. And if you don't believe that, as soon as you make a little progress, I guarantee you a test is going to come your way, and it's going to test your faith right there where you are. And it's going to say, okay, oh, you got it, you made it here, I'm going to see if you really got what you say. And that's when you press into him even the more. See, see, this initial thing, this word, I, I talk, every time I talk about this word, it get real quiet in the house when I start talking about that sanctification process. See, that thing that, that we don't like to go through because what it does, it puts you on notice. See, you got to begin to, to look at yourself when you start talking about getting sanctified because now you're wearing yourself against Jesus. You're wearing yourself against his standards of righteousness and holiness. And sanctification don't give you no wiggle room. So you can't be bad today and, off, and, and, and oh, I'm being sanctified. No, sanctification is going to convict you every time you try to step out the door the wrong way. It's going to pull you back in. It's going to let you know, don't you go that way. Don't you do that thing. Don't you say that because that's not what I do. That's not what... I model. That's not what I have instructed you to do. See, when I was walking with the old man, every day you were getting more and more corrupt. But my God, when you start walking in the newness of Christ, every day you're looking more like him. Every day that you press into him, you begin to lose your old mess, your old identity. And the more you walk with him, the more you look like him. The more you walk with him, the more you look like him. The more you walk with him, the more you act like him. The more you walk with him, the more you talk like him. The more you walk with him, the more you believe like him. And see, as you keep seeing, it keeps growing, and it keeps growing, and it keeps growing. Mm. Scripture told us right here in Ephesians 4 and 23 to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's let you know right there it's the inner thing. As a matter of fact, it's an inner thing. See, it ain't nothing. That, look, every day you need to be renewed. Listen to what it says in Galatians, the fifth chapter. It says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Trying to figure out why you keep doing it? Get in the spirit. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. There's a war going on. It's a war. But whatever you edify, it's going to win. What are you, what are you, what are you, which one are you really spending time with? Your flesh or your spirit? Are you pressing into God or you're pressing into yourself? Because whichever one you do, that's the one that's going to be the strongest. And the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. They can't stand each other. You notice that? Your flesh and your spirit can't stand each other. Both of them want to be in charge. But I can tell you what, the spirit being in charge is going to be better for you than your flesh. Why? Look, it says this, so that you do not do the things that you wish. What you talking about? Well, if you edify the flesh, it's not going to let you do the good that God wants you to do. And if you edify your spirit, 
there's no way you're going to be able to do the things that the flesh wants it to do. So whichever one you edifying, whichever one you building up, that's the one that's going to be in charge. But it's a continual process of being transformed, being cleansed, being renewed. You got to keep pressing in. And as we surrender to the Holy Spirit, see, you can't do this on your own. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to help you. You, If you're trying to accomplish this thing, if you're trying to be brand new uh, all by yourself, guess what? You'll never get there. But the power of the Holy Spirit is what will give you the strength, will give you the fortitude, will give you the press through to do what God has called you to do. But he does it in the inner man. Inner man. Last one. Then you got to put on the new man. So you can't be looking like you used to. See, I said when I went down to the altar, I looked one way, but when I came up, I looked a whole different way. I see some of my people, friends right now, they can't believe it. That's why. And then when I started sharing some of the things I used to do and some of the places I used to go and some of the things I was involved in, people be like, why? Jesus. See, 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 putting on the new man is this. You begin to be, you have a reflection of Christ. See, you begin to reflect his image. See, that's what you want to do. See, when people see you, you don't want them to see you. You want them to see Christ. See, because they can see you and they can find all kind of faults. They can find all kind of things that's not right. They can, they can point out something about you, but they can't point out nothing about Christ other than him being the Lord, the Savior, and him being the, 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 the one who gave his life, the one who, the compassionate one. That, that's all. The healer, the deliverer. <sighs> see, 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 see. <laughs> Put on a new self. Look, the Revised Standard Version of the Bible says, clothe yourselves with your new self. That means you're putting it on, my new self. See, 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 it's like this. I love this. This, this is good. See, when you put on your new self, it's like this. It's like you exchanging your grave clothes, and you put on some grace clothes. See, because the grace clothes come from Christ. But you took off them grave clothes. I ain't got to wear that stuff no more. Now, that, look. When they came looking for Jesus, what was in there? The grave clothes. He didn't get up with the grave clothes. He didn't need no grave clothes. See, you can't accept him and, 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 and let your sins die, and then you get up and put the grave clothes back on and go down the street. Put your grace clothes on. <laughs> Jesus gave us a perfect illustration. Uh, he talked about, about, about pouring a, a, a new wine into old wine skins. See, see, he was talking about that thing. You can't, you can't pour that, that, that new stuff in that old stuff because it can't contain it. See, it got to be something brand new. That's why it starts on the inside. You notice it didn't say don't pour old wine into a new skin. It said don't pour a new wine into an old wine skin. And it's the same thing God is telling us. We got to, look. You got to be brand new. That's what he comes to do, make us new. <laughs> I'm good to close. I'm good to close. I got an illustration. I got an illustration. See, this, this is how the Holy Spirit works. I have this illustration I want to show you. See, 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 there's a thing called the law of displacement. And team, you can come on, get back in place. And, and basically what it talks about is as you, you, you add a fluid to an object, or it can be an object or a fluid, what you put in goes down to the bottom and it pushes what's in there up, out. Some of y'all got that already. Some of y'all got it. Some of y'all missed it. Y'all going to see it in a minute, though. So what am I saying? So So what am I saying? Red punch, red juice in the glass. See, this is how it is for us. But when you start pouring the water into the glass, let me do it in here so it won't spill. The more you pour, the more what's in there pushes out. The more you pour, the more what's in there pushes out. The more you pour. It's already changing. It's already changing. It's already changing. It's already changing. 
I ain't finished yet. See, see, not yet, not yet, not yet. Hold up, hold up. It's already, it's still pushing down. All the old stuff, oh, it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. The old stuff is coming out. Oh, it's coming out. It's almost there. It's almost there. It's almost there. Almost there. See, because you got to see, this is what's happening. See, 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 this is, this is the law of displacement. But this is also, this is what happens to us as believers. See, you got to understand something. You got to understand something. See? See, before, before the Holy Spirit can come in and begin to do His work in your life, it got to get the mess up out of you. It got to get the junk out. It got to cleanse you. And just like I poured that water in there, the more water I poured in there, the more the juice was pushed up, the more the junk was pushed up out. And see, that's what we got to do. We got to let the, 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 the law of displacement of Christ and the Holy Spirit begin to pour down in us and push all of our mess up out of us so then God's Holy Spirit can rest and rule in us and then we can do something in the earth. Same principle works in our lives. But if you're not, look, if you're holding the junk, if you got all this stuff in there and, 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 and there's nowhere for the Holy Spirit to come in, and if you're not allowing him to come in and push the mess up out of you, guess what? You can't do what is good. You can't do the things he's calling you to do. You can't be effective. You're not the new man. So come on, stand up on your feet today. My prayer for every one of us today that's here in this house and those that are with us today online is that you allow the Holy Spirit to come in, to begin to, 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 to push the stuff up out, to cleanse you, to be the new man, the new woman that God has called us to be. He didn't call us to be like anything else other than him, other than him. Today, bow your heads. Today, there are two categories of people I want to pray for. The first are those who have never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. So we already know that your heart is dark and you, you don't have the light of Christ shining in, but Jesus died for you, just like he died for me. He wants to change your life. He wants to give you that new identity. He wants to change your DNA from darkness to light. And if that's you today, I, I just want you to do something very simple. Jesus already paid the hard price. He died on the cross. He took all the pain. He took the nails. He took all the punishment so that all we have to do it's believe in our heart and confess with our mouths. And so if you're in this house today, if you're here in this sanctuary and you don't know him today, everybody else, I want everybody to be praying. And if you don't know him today, I want you just to raise your hand. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm not trying to call anybody out. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. But the one thing we do know that is tomorrow's not promised for anybody. Don't think that you got time because you might be young. Young people, they're young graves, they're all types of graves, all sizes. And I know that Jesus desires for you to know him. If you're in the house today, raise your hand. We want to pray with you. <clears throat> if you're online today and you, you're the same, you haven't accepted him today, I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. And those of you in the house, if everyone would join in as well. Dear Jesus, I'm confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart that you are the Lord and Savior. I ask that you forgive me today of all of my sins. Make me brand new. Make me your child. Cleanse me up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just that simple. If you made that declaration today and you're online today, if you would just click on that link, there's a link you can click on, or if you could just 
type in something. If you're on Facebook, let us know. We want to come alongside of you. Just as I said earlier, we don't want you to go by yourself. We want to come alongside. We want to connect with you so that you can take the next steps in your new faith. But you are brand new because it took place in your heart today. Amen. Second group I want to pray for today is those that are in the, in the faith. In the faith. But you were like the glass when I first started pouring. It wasn't all the way dark, but it wasn't all the way pure. But God desires for us to be all the way. We have to be totally, totally brand new in Him. And so today, if that's you today, you know it. Every, you already know. You already know if you haven't quite hit the mark that you maybe, maybe have taken some missteps. And it's not about putting anybody on the spot. It's not about making anybody feel bad. But it's an opportunity for you to get it right so that the Holy Spirit can flush the rest of the mess out. And so if that's you today, I just want you to raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, don't, 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 don't act like, don't, don't, don't fake. You can't fake God. You can fake me out, but you can't fake God out. God knows. He sees the heart. He doesn't look on the outward. He knows exactly how you're living. He knows how you're living. He knows if you're reading the Word every day. He knows if you're studying every day. He knows if you're pressing into Him every day. He knows if you're, if you're every day, you set your pattern of your life to please God. He already knows that. I want to pray for you today because I believe that God wants to do something in your life. I believe that He wants to move in your life. He wants to press out the mess so He can come in and bless. So, Father, we just pray now, God, for those, God, who, who, who raised their hand, God, whose hearts are towards you. God, they desire to be the total new man that you called us to be. God, where there's no darkness. God, you know, it doesn't mean that we don't make mistakes. But God, that's not the way we live. God, we're not walking in sin. But God, but we're living our life each day, God, pressing to do your will. So Father, I pray right now that you are moving each life. That you remove the things, God, that cause them to stumble. The hindrances, God. Those weights. Those besetting sins. It could be a person. It could be a situation. God, whatever it is, God, give them the strength, God, to move away from it. To deny it. To tell it no and to begin to walk in oh God the boldness oh God and the courage that you give God that they oh God can be what you called them to be that we can be the united body that you called us to be in this end time God that we can go out God and be a light to this world we thank you for it today God and we give you the glory for it and God, we just ask that you bless, oh God, each one, God, that's under the sound of my voice today. God, that you go with us, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, that you continue to walk with us, lead us, guide us. God, let people get up every day with a song on their heart. God, just a melody, God, just ringing, God, in their heart, God, each and every day. God, we thank you for today, and we praise you in Jesus' matchless name. And all God's people said amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.